In this video, I'm going to show you some of the attributes that are available to you in Fair2D. So first of all, I've split them up into three different sections, visuals, terrain type, and collider. So in the visuals, uh, the first item we have is the vertex color. This will um, color each vertex, like every single vertex on the terrain has a color that gets applied to it. And you can then take advantage of this in your shader to color your mesh a, a certain material. Uh, this method is great because it's um, wonderful for uh, reducing draw calls. Uh, changing the color of your material will change the number of draw calls that you have. But if you're just changing the vertex color, then you're OK. Um, if you are looking to change the color of your objects during runtime, there's a tint shader that will allow you to do that. Um, but for most cases, if you're just doing a static color change, then the vertex color is appropriate. Um, we've also got pixels per unit. Pixels per unit should be pretty familiar for those of you working with two dimensions. It's basically the number of pixels that Unity tries to put in a single Unity unit of space. Um, so this will match up usually to most of your sprites. Uh, the stretch threshold is basically tells uh, fair 2D where to split the terrain. You can see as you stretch the terrain out and in, it will uh, split again at different points. And stretch stretch threshold changes when that happens. Like if it if it does it um, on one side, if it, if it squeezes them together, if it stretches them out more. Uh, it's not usually something that you play with, but uh, it's there just in case you've got something that you really really need to to tweak around. Um, there's the slant amount, and slant amount is a really cool little feature here. So if I tilt this up, you'll see here that uh, all of a sudden the edges become three-dimensional. Now this does take a little bit of tweaking to get right, um, but it can be excellent for adding a little bit of parallaxing to your terrain. It gives you a little bit of that three-dimensional perspective line sort of thing, um, so long as you've got it set up to work right with that. So it's a nice little tweak to, to add some add some flair to your terrain. And this will go the other way as well, just in case you want to do that. <laughs> so, um, Next option here is split middle, and I'm going to turn on wireframe uh, just so you can see that. Uh, split middle is on by default, and basically it helps to uh, fix some of the texture stretching that you might find. And it's not going to have a huge impact on these bits because they're 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 all kind of straight lines and everything but you can see here when I toggle it on and off um, how the te texture changes how I get stretched so it can improve the quality a little bit this is a little bit more obvious when you're in smoothing um, so you can see there split middle split middle so it's a small detail but it can be nice <laughs> um, creating tangents if you are doing uh, normal maps, then you want to have create tangents on because normal maps don't work unless you're using tangents on your mesh. Um, it is a little bit slow to calculate tangents currently, so I don't usually leave it on by default, but if you are doing normal map shaders on your uh, terrain, then that's what you want to get. Uh, randomize edge, let me see, randomize edge by world coordinates. It's a, it's a handful of a name. Randomize edge by world coordinates basically uh, tells Fair2D where to look for the, the random seed for your uh, randomness here. So normally it just picks the, the position of the first item in the, the terrain and then goes based off of that. You can see here it's no longer flickering or anything like that. And this just makes editing a little bit nicer when you're creating your terrain. Um, but if you're doing something procedural where the the first item gets dropped and the next item just becomes the first item in the list again, then that can add, end up with some really weird stuff. So if you turn on randomize by edge coordinates, then it'll always flicker when you're doing it in editor. But if it stays the same point at the same point, then um, as you can see here, this one no longer has any influence over the the next region. There, it's it's completely individual. So if you're doing like a, an infinite runner where you're dropping one point and adding on points to the end, then this is perfect for that. The fill UV offset is great for um, 
changing the position of the fill material. So if you've got some sort of fill material that, that's got details on it that you want to line up in a certain spot, then this is for you. Um, the sorting layer and the order in layer should be familiar for those of you who've worked with the 2D sprites. So this is exactly the same thing. And technically this is just referencing attributes that are in the renderer. Every single renderer has these attributes available to it. I'm simply exposing it here on the path terrain. Okay, um, terrain type. Fill type is basically how it treats the, the terrain itself. So right now we have a closed terrain. Um, this is just, you know, it takes all the points, it closes the end bits, and you get a floating little island sort of thing. That's it's the general idea behind closed. Uh, the other big one is inverted closed, and that's what you're gonna see with all of these exterior bits. Um, this just kind of encloses the inside of it and just fills out the rest with, with fill. Um, and that's great for doing interior sort of environments um, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's a nice little feature to have available to you. Uh, another one here, let's go with um, fill only closed. If you don't want your edges, um, if you're doing some sort of vectorized style, this is excellent for that. Um, and we also have two script modes, and I'm going to show you those in a, a different object because those are a little bit more painful to to, to work with. Do, 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 do. Um, this is actually, I'll go with this one. This is fine. And change this to skirt. So the, the skirt basically just kind of has this uh, bottom drop down sort of layer to it. Um, let me hide this. Do, do, do this one too. So the, this kind of just does a, a drop down edge so it'll go to the endpoints of the path and it'll drop down a certain amount. You can see here there's the skirt y value. Um, this basically defines how far down that skirt drops. Okay so this is excellent for uh, platforming stuff where you're going from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. Um, it's a really nice one to have as well as we've got fill only skirt so if you don't want the edges on this one either then there you go. Okay. Um, there's also the none mode, which is advantageous if you're doing something that is just edges. So I've got a terrain material that's designed specifically for this. Um, this is, as you can see, fill type none. It doesn't use any sort of fill on it. Uh, this is just an edge. So um, that's that's pretty much the only real use that that I've I've done with the um, the fill type for none. So. Um, I'm sure you can come up with slightly more creative ideas, but there you go. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to delete this, do, 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 put this back on. Okay, um, the fill Z offset. So if you take a look from the side, you'll notice that there's a small gap between the, the terrain, the fill, and the edges. Uh, this is just to help with Z order and sorting and everything like that. So the fill offset, you can change that here. Uh, I got the wrong one selected. Uh, here we go. Do, 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 do. So this will move it backwards or forward. So if you want to get like uh, something between those two, you can. Um, it's left relatively close to the edges. That way you don't have to worry about it in most cases. But it is there and it is something that you do need to pay attention to on occasions. Okay. Um, split corners. Split corners is... Um, Basically, it's it's a setting that causes these edges to be separate. So if I turn this off, you can see there it, it just goes all to the top material, um, which sometimes that's nice, sometimes it's not. Um, it's up for you. It's an option for you. <laughs> smoothing, smoothing, smoothing is really nice now. Um, as you can see, this is you know all these objects on the foreground and the the background are smoothed. Um, and it adds in a fair number of verts, like you can see here, um, show mesh, like extra verts, click, 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 click. And you can tweak that. Uh, we've got edge splits. Um, edge splits basically says, for each body segment, how many times shall I split it? So I default it to two, but you can get way more than that if you want to. Uh, fill split uh, basically says, how many splits shall I do with the, the fill material and the collider? So it is the fill material and the collider both. 
um, and it's a relative to the edge splits. Okay, so if, if you bring it up larger, it's going to reduce the number of splits. If you bring it down further, then it's going to increase the number of splits there. So, you know, higher detail, lower detail, uh, whatever you want. Uh, and you'll notice here, because these are straight lines, it doesn't actually split the fill any, so, you know, it's, it's pretty much perfectly utilized there. Um, so that's fill split and edge split. Um, colliders, colliders, colliders. Uh, so here we we've got we can turn colliders on and off. So sometimes you just want them to be decorative, like off in the background here. And these this one's got a collider on it, and this one does not. Um, when you have two D colliders, it doesn't matter where the Z location is. So usually, you know, if you're using two D collider stuff, so you want to turn those off because um, otherwise you will collide with stuff and it's a pain. Um, there's sharp corners. By default, these are kind of like almost beveled sort of things. Um, and so you can turn them into sharp and they'll be pointy, uh, which is really nice. You can tell it to use 3D colliders. Uh, if you're using 3D physics, then 3D colliders are, are really nice. You get a collider width, which will determine you know how wide each bit is. And like if I, if I run this, I can show you in the scene view. Um, he fell through it because he's using two-dimensional colliders. So this is the 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 collider width here. So if you've got like multiple layers or something, then you can use um, a, a certain width to make sure that they don't overlap or anything like that. So um, there's also a smooth sphere collider, which is an option that a couple of people asked me for uh, to expose that. So that's in there for you. Um, is trigger, so you can set the entire thing to be a trigger volume instead, which is really great for like uh, secret areas or something along those lines. So if you need it as a trigger, it's there. Uh, you've also got a physics material, so you can just drop a physics material on it to find your friction, stuff like that. Uh, offsets are uh, basically how far from the path each edge goes, so like the top there, you know, um, can tweak that around, define where the feet go. You got the right side, you know, left side, bottom side. And you can tell it to, of course, turn off colliders on either edge too. So if you take off left and right, um, it'll only generate colliders along the top and the bottom, which is an interesting thing to be able to do and can be pretty useful in certain scenarios. So there you go. Uh, when you've turned this off, it does do the colliders a little bit differently. I believe collider thickness is primarily for two-dimensional colliders. It'll basically create a little rectangle underneath it instead of just a single line. Uh, with 3D colliders, it should do a single line here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yes, the 3D colliders are a single line. And if we go back to regular 2D colliders and run this again, you'll see we get... Um, a little rectangle here with the the collider thickness so I can yeah theoretically I can adjust the collider thickness here to make it bigger like 0.5 make it real obvious and yeah a little bigger there so uh, that's just the, the thickness of the collider that it generates for for and this is only when you've got the the, the top one of the sides turned off because it can't create a, a continuous contained collider otherwise. Okay. Um, so that's all the options that I really wanted to talk about in the, the terrain. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned.